Well, joining us on the line now is Mohammed Shafiq, who is the chief executive of the Ramadan Foundation, a British Muslim community group, and he joins us from Manchester in England. Mohammed, thank you very much for joining us. What is your reaction to what has happened in Paris today? Well, as a human being, as a Muslim, I totally condemn this barbaric and evil crime. Uh, if they think that they have the right to kill innocent people because they disagree uh, with cartoons, uh, then they're living in a parallel universe. Uh, we as Muslims abhor the terrorism, we abhor their actions, and they don't, stand, they don't do it in my name or the name of my great faith. Um, I'm somebody who opposes those cartoons, have consistently opposed those cartoons, but do that through the political protests, through the media, um, and through peaceful methods. Uh, there's, there's no excuse for violence whatsoever. And in a democracy, people are free to express themselves how they want to. Uh, equally, we are free to express uh, our opposition uh, to those cartoons, but no violence is ever the solution to any problem. Are you surprised, though, by what unfolded at the uh, offices this morning? Um, I'm not surprised because we're obviously facing uh, a heightened threat now from ISIS uh, and other terrorist organisations who think that the best way to damage uh, relations in our countries uh, is to carry out lone wolf attacks as we saw in London last year with Lee Rigby, as we've seen uh, so brutally uh, today in Paris. Uh, we as Muslims, as Christians, as Jews, as people of no faith all need to come together and unify against this threat. The terrorists want to divide us and in that we must, not, we must make sure that they don't succeed. Many of the journalists we've been speaking to have been saying to us there is a line that uh, is, should be open always for journalists when they are uh, commenting on any aspect of uh, news or topical matters, whether it be satirical or in the news agenda. Is a, has a line been crossed, do you think, for this paper? Well, I think if you want to challenge Islam, if you want to have a, uh, an engagement and a debate with Islam and Muslims, then we in the Muslim community are up for that debate. It's going to be based on tolerance, it's going to be based on evidence, and it's going to be, be based on respect. And these sort of satirical cartoons uh, that depict the Prophet Muhammad uh, are an affront to our faith, uh, something which I oppose. But again, I go to this very central principle. The journalists are free to uh, make those cartoons, sorry, to draw those cartoons and promote uh, their issues in a free society. And we're equally uh, able to challenge that in a peaceful manner. Uh, there's no place for violence or terrorism or death threats against anybody. Um, I, have, I, I or any person uh, was subjected to death threats last year by Al-Shabaab and Al-Qaeda. So we won't take uh, we, you know, we won't be uh, um, taking any lectures, if you like, from these terrorists who want to cause harm and division. Uh, and my thoughts and prayers are with the families uh, of those that have been injured and been killed in Paris today. Are you worried about what an attack like this, uh, done by a groom, group using the name uh, Allah in, in, the, in the name of the Muslim community there, what it does to people that are living not only in Paris and France, but in England as well? Um, it confuses people. Uh, when we see what is, goes on in Syria and when we see what goes on around the world, people think that somehow violence is acceptable. You know, I, I ask people not to take what uh, I say as the basis for their opinion on Islam. Talk to the thousands of Muslim scholars from every different strand, uh, a Sufi, Wahhabi, Shia, uh, every uh, background, uh, who've been very consistent in saying terrorism is unacceptable, it's an affront to our faith and we must not uh, stand by and watch it happen and, and try legitimizing it. There's no excuse for it. Um, and we've got a huge debate going on within the Muslim community about this issue. There's a huge challenge now uh, to expose this ideology, the sources of funding where it comes from, uh, and above all, uh, to say to young people that if you want to challenge what goes on in Syria, if you want to highlight the issue of Palestine uh, and the Israelis, then the way to do that is through the political process, uh, is through peaceful methods um, in this country and around the world, and not through violence. And anybody who engages in violence is an enemy, not just of the state, but as an enemy of Muslims around the world. Mohammed Shafiq, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much for joining us. And in fact, following on from what Mohammed was saying, that debate is happening in the Muslim community globally. Uh, just got a statement from the Arab League. Arab League chief Nabil al-Arabi strongly condemns the terrorist attack on Charlie Hebdo newspaper in Paris. Also, al-Azhar, the Sunni Islam's most prestigious center of learning in Egypt, uh, issuing a statement condemning what it calls this criminal attack, saying that Islam 
denounces any violence. And we'll keep you across what's coming through via social media as well. But let's uh, bring in our next guest, Martin George Edmund Rosen, who's a, a British editorial cartoonist and novelist. Uh, Martin, thanks for coming on to speak to us on BBC News. Did you know uh, any of these journalists at Charlie Hebdo? Uh, I, I didn't know them personally, but I knew the work of some of them. And I just, first of all, I want to say how numb I'm feeling that my colleagues have been murdered in this barbaric fashion. Um, you know, I, I know that my job and their job as well uh, was to give offence. That's what we're licensed to do in a free society. Uh, it's part of the political process, taunting, name-calling and giving offence. Uh, but I've often described what I do as assassination without the blood, but the key words in that phrase are without the blood. It's how we channel human emotions and human arguments, but in a non-violent way. Uh, and the, the previous speaker was saying, uh, responding to being offended. It's, it's this idea that has become so current for the last 15 years or so that taking offence is being used as, a, as, a, as an offensive act in, in itself. So people are never allowed to do anything in case they might offend somebody else. But uh, as I've often said, the most offensive thing you could ever do is kill somebody else. So what would you do to those who say, to an extent, the journalists brought it on themselves? I'd say that is a truly offensive thing to say. Um, truly offensive. Uh, that, um, you know, I, I personally am offended by all sorts of things. It doesn't mean I'm going to go and murder somebody. And to say that, you know, they have uh, done something which has offended somebody else and therefore they should be murdered, well, that's a, a barbaric medieval despotism. That's the kind of uh, society we, I hope, don't live in. And if these people choose to live in a society like that, well, we've got to try and stop them imposing on everybody else. It's very easy, though, isn't it, for us to sit here as journalists to say that, you know, we've got to continue with what we're doing. But if you were in France now, I mean, the journalists that we've been speaking to said journalism in France has now changed forevermore after today. What would your assessment be of that comment and how you move forward uh, with well, this? Well, I don't, I, I don't necessarily think that's true. It's the kind of thing people say at, at horrific moments like these that nothing will ever be the same again. Um, that the best thing that can happen is to laugh these barbarians back into the dustbin of history, actually. The reason they have done what they've done is because they cannot bear the idea of being laughed at because their ideology is so comprehensively ludicrous. And it's ludicrous not because of the spiritual dimension of it, but because they believe everybody should believe what they believe. And if anybody disagrees with them, they murder them. And that is a ludicrous, preposterous notion and they should be laughed at for it. But can satirical journalism have its place in French society after this? Of course it can. Will they be brave enough to do it, is my point. Well, uh, that, 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 that's another issue. I mean, uh, after the, you know, 10 years ago, the Danish cartoon business, uh, which was, uh, people forget, over 100 people died as a consequence of that. All of them happened to be Muslims, shot on the streets of Muslim countries because they'd been fermented into rioting by Muslim clerics. Uh, this time, cartoonists have died. Last time, cartoonists didn't die. But um, it's, it's the idea that, uh, you know, you could never produce a cartoon again. You could never draw uh, a, a mocking portrait of anybody at all because there might be a danger that they will take offence and kill you. But, you know, if the response is we don't draw anything anymore, they've won.